hybrids are the future. With dwindling oil supplies and a move towards green energy, more and more car makers are going for the electric push. Uh, the thing is, we don't have the proper EV infrastructure here in the Philippines to support that push, uh, which is why going hybrid makes a lot of sense. Uh, Toyota seems to think so because we have here their latest hybrid vehicle in the local lineup, the RAV4 XLE Hybrid Electric Vehicle. In this video, we find out if a green RAV4 uh, makes any sense here in the Philippines. Let's do this. Hello guys, I'm Reagan and welcome back to another car feature. If you're new to my channel, I want you to click that subscribe button for your regular dose of Philippine automotive content. If you're my subscriber already, well sit back, relax and enjoy the show, but first, click that like button. Also special thanks to Toyota Valenzuela for providing the RAV4 XLE HEV to do this car feature. If you are within the area and you need any Toyota, head on down here to Toyota Valenzuela and check them out. For any inquiries, you may contact the person in my pinned comment below. There are multiple advantages to going green, with fuel savings being the biggest one. Uh, imagine gassing up once a month, even if you use your car every day. Now that, my friends, is something that I can definitely go for. Now Toyota has been an industry leader when it comes to pushing hybrid electric vehicles in the country with this RAV4 now joining the ranks of the Corolla Altis, the Corolla Cross, and the Toyota Camry. Now the good thing here is Toyota also prices their hybrid electric vehicles quite well uh, with this base spec RAV4 XLE HEV retailing for only 2,172,000 Philippine pesos. Now, that puts it at the same price level as the other top-spec compact crossovers from other car makers. Uh, but guys, this RAV4 is a car that you only need to gas up once a month, even if you use it daily. Now, try to top that. Now, some of you might say that the hybrid batteries of this thing are not reliable, they're too expensive to replace, yada, yada, yada. Guys, first, this is a Toyota, so what are you saying that it's not reliable? And second, uh, the Toyota Prius, which is uh, Toyota's first hybrid vehicle, first came out in 1997, which is a solid 25 years worth of experience in hybrid battery technology already. Uh, in fact, some of you guys watching this video might not have even been born yet in 1997. Well, not me. I already graduated high school uh, at that time. Now guys, all I'm saying here is, you know, going hybrid, owning a hybrid vehicle is no longer as risky as some of you might think it would be. Now the Toyota Prius that came out in 1997 looked kind of weird, but not this RAV4 we have here. In fact, aside from that blue badge there on the center saying that it's a hybrid vehicle, well, this entire front fascia looks identical to an ICE RAV4 or a RAV4 with an ICE motor. Now, we get um, full LED lighting units here. We've got LED DRLs, LED headlights, and LED fog lights, uh, plus that grimacing front grille there uh, that ties it closer to the other crossovers in Toyota's lineup. Now, unlike uh, a pure electric vehicle, uh, this front grille here is functional uh, because this RAV4 hybrid uh, comes with an ICE 
which uh, just stands for internal combustion engine. So being a hybrid, it has an ICE and it also has an electric motor. The side profile carries the same Toyota crossover silhouette that can be found well in other Toyota crossovers. In fact, if you look at it closely, uh, the RAV4 looks like a larger Corolla Cross. Or the Corolla Cross looks like a smaller RAV4. Uh, yeah, it can go either way. Now, the base trim RAV4 XLE that we have here uh, has a smaller 17-inch alloy wheels here versus the larger 18s found in the limited trim. And we also have side mirrors that have LED turn signals, uh, but these side mirrors do not have a power folding function. Oh, oh yeah, and we also have a body-colored door handles here uh, versus the chrome found in the top-spec RAV4 Limited. Now, other than those, uh, those few yeah, changes made here, uh, well, this RAV4 XLE is practically identical uh, to the top-spec RAV4 Limited, uh, even down to the mechanical bits. Uh, you see, we get uh, four-wheel disc brakes here, and for the suspension, we have a MacPherson setup in the front and a double wishbone rear suspension. Uh, now, as for the ground clearance, well, we have an ample 213 millimeters of ground clearance here, uh, helping the RAV4 fulfill its life purpose as a recreational activity vehicle. Uh, yes, my friends, that is what RAV stands for, in case you're wondering. The rear end of the RAV4 HEV is a pretty typical compact crossover rear end with LED taillights here, although I am quite surprised to see that we still get a pair of functional exhaust tips there. Now, that is something I'd expect to get in a sporty compact crossover, but this RAV4 hybrid also gets that. Now, the rear bumper is also covered in uh, plastic cladding here uh, to help protect it from debris in case you take your RAV4 out for some light off-roading. Now, uh, pop open the power lift gate. Uh, you see that even the base trim RAV4 XLE uh, gets a power lift gate. Well, so now that we have this thing open, uh, you'll see that the boot space of the RAV4 is one of the biggest in the category. At 37 and a half cubic feet of space, it only trails the Honda CRV in this segment. Now, this uh, 37 and a half cubic feet of space can expand to nearly 70 cubic feet uh, if ever you decide to tumble down uh, the back seats. Now, another good news here, guys, is the, the trunk lip itself is also on the low side, uh, making it easier to load heavy stuff into this um, cargo area. Now, another good news I saw here, guys, is that underneath the floorboard of, the, of this uh, trunk, well, we get an actual spare tire uh, instead of the usual uh, donut spare tires or fix-up flats that the other car makers are, are giving us. Another advantage of a hybrid vehicle, aside from fuel economy, is, uh, believe it or not, performance. In fact, you can even drag race in a Prius. You were drag racing in a Prius. See, when a gasoline motor combines its maximum output with an electric motor, well, you're gonna get some pretty healthy figures. In fact, the maximum combined output of this RAV4 HEV is 215 horsepower, which if you think about it, guys, is even higher than, let's say, a Toyota 86. However, the RAV4s that we get here are only front-wheel drive uh, because all-wheel drive is an option that, uh, well, Toyota Motor Philippines didn't bring into the country. Now, the transmission of this thing is also a CVT, uh, which tells us that this RAV4, uh, even, if, uh, yeah, even if you can drag race it uh, if you need to, well, its core life purpose is still to be a fuel miser. The RAV4's cockpit is straightforward uh, corporate Toyota uh, because we just have an all-black uh, cabin here, uh, save for some, yeah, some matte aluminum trim thrown here and there. Now, this base trim RAV4 XLE gets uh, fabric seats here, which has absolutely zero power adjustments. 
Now, if you look at it in the greater scheme of things, guys, it's not really a big issue. Now, when you move over to the steering wheel, well, we do get a leather wrap steering wheel here, plus a little surprise that I didn't expect in this base trim wrap for XLE. You see, hiding behind the steering wheel, we get a pair of paddle shifters, uh, which supports what I said a while back that yes, you can indeed drag race in your RAV4 HEV in case it's needed because you have a pair of paddle shifters. Now, the steering wheel also adjusts for tilt and it also telescopes. So yes, that is already expected in a compact crossover from Toyota that is already uh, nearly at the premium category. Now, the steering wheel also has buttons for some of Toyota's safety sense uh, driver assist bits uh, because we don't get the whole caboodle. See, as you can see on the screen, we have some Toyota Safety Sense features here, uh, except for blind spot warning and rear cross traffic alert, which is reserved for the top spec RAV4 LTD. Uh, still, guys, this, uh, these safety bits is good enough to keep this base trim RAV4 XLE safe at all times. Now, when you turn your attention to the gauge cluster here, we don't get that nifty digital, you know, large digital display panel there that's found in other uh, Toyota hybrid vehicles. Uh, but rather, we still get a typical analog layout here. You got an analog speedo and what looks like an analog tag, but in reality, it's an eco meter. Now, we do have a tiny multi information display in the middle, around 4.2 inches, for some more vital vehicle information. Now, when you move over to the, to the infotainment system here, well, this, my friends, is truly corporate Toyota. You see, we have a 7-inch touchscreen here that is placed in a CRT monitor type housing right there. In fact, we even still have a CD tray front and center, uh, something that I no longer expect to see in vehicles manufactured from 2022 onwards. Uh, still, guys, this is quite functional. Uh, we get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Plus, we also have the image for a reverse camera. Now, if you want the, the panoramic view or the 360-degree view camera, well, uh, you'll have to spring up for the top-spec RAV4 limited trim. Also, if you look up, guys, you'll see that we don't have a moonroof here uh, because that's also reserved for the top-spec RAV4 limited. Now, other than that, guys, we get the same goodies and niceties here that are found in the top spec RAV4. We get a dual uh, fully automatic climate control setup here. We even have a wireless Qi uh, charging pad and we have an electronic park brake with an auto hold feature. Now, there are also buttons here for your drive modes. Uh, you can go full EV mode if you want for a certain distance. Plus, we have the usual eco, normal, and sport mode. Now, Below that, we have a couple of cup holders which I will subject to my 600 ml clean canteen test. Now, I know that um, the RAV4 is a global model, so I am very confident that this will pass. And there you have it, gentlemen and ladies. Yes, the RAV4 passes my clean canteen test. Now, when you look at the entire well, the cabin layout, the cabin materials used here, well, I'm happy that uh, Toyota used soft touch materials for this RAV4. We get uh, white stitch leather here on the middle dashboard. Uh, I do believe that the top dashboard is just soft touch plastic though, uh, but we get hard touch plastics on the tops of the door cards. Although the door card the elbow rest is padded as well as the center armrest right here. Uh, it's an overall yeah, basic, uh, quite bland in fact, uh, cabin here. Uh, but the good thing here is well, what's what's important is it has to be functional and in that regard yeah the rav force cabin fully delivers The RAV4 HEV's back seat has ample amount of space because it is a global crossover model so since this is being sold and offered worldwide, well, it needs to have enough space inside to accommodate much larger people than myself. 
You see guys, I'm only 5 foot 6 and this is my driving position here and I get a good 7 to 8 inches of knee room and a whopping yeah, around 8, 9 inches of headroom right there. So yes, the absolute space here at the back is really good guys but I, I did notice that the, that the seats themselves are a bit on the firm side. So I didn't expect to get that here in the RAV4 uh, since this vehicle is already over 2 million Philippine pesos. So yeah, the seats are really, yeah, they're quite firm. Uh, surprisingly firm, guys. Now, as for the amenities here at the back, well, this RAV4 uh, XLE uh, still delivers. Uh, we get a couple of AC vents here. We have a couple of USB charge ports and also a center armrest uh, that comes with a couple of cup holders. I understand that most people in the Philippines are still hesitant to switch to a hybrid vehicle. Now, Toyota Motor Philippines also understands this, uh, which is why they are making it easier for everyone to switch to hybrid technology. So, how exactly is Toyota Motor Philippines doing that? Well, it's pretty simple, guys. Uh, by slowly replacing the local Toyota lineup with cars that have hybrid technology. <laughs> Soon, guys, in the near future, if you want to buy a Toyota, oh, well then, you won't have any choice but to go hybrid. But here's the thing, guys. If you think about it, it's not really a bad thing. It's good for Mother Earth, plus it's also good for your wallet. And in case you're in a rush, not a Toyota rush, but in case you're rushing, uh, well then, you can always drag race in your Toyota RAV4 HEV. Thanks for watching.